Okay, so it's not it's not that I was salty about Sora being <laughs> in in Smash. Okay, I'm gonna so verbatim, Sora made it. Um, your reaction? Let's just go word for word. Um, let's make sure we got this correct here. Uh, where the fuck is it? Uh, fuck out of here. Fuck Sora. <laughs> All right, well, uh, since you have receipts. So, uh, <laughs> so let's, let's talk about that. <laughs> How do you feel about Sora coming into Smash? I, the thing is, I know. So here's what I'm going to say. I have a lot of respect for Masahiro Sakurai, the creator of Smash Brothers. And that's it. So that's the only like good thing... <laughs> That's the only good thing that I have to say. Um, <laughs> I, I, I do not like... I, I, I think, uh, to be honest, a lot of it is the fact that I have become disillusioned with the Kingdom Hearts franchise. And because of that, my and my frustration with Kingdom Hearts 3, with that feeling like that was a complete waste of a game and it was a huge disappointment i would say that that is that's honestly one of the biggest disappointments probably in the past two decades of video games it's 20 years two decades yeah 20 years i mean that, so so we talk about disappointments that's more disappointing than sonic 06 yeah i never played sonic 06 myself i didn't buy that um I didn't have like incredible hopes for 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 Sonic 06. I know it was like disappointing given the that like Sonic Adventure 2 was awesome, but it, it that was not one. I was we were young and when it was Sonic uh, Sonic 06, um, and I think That's and true. I I think that Sonic 06 wasn't this like incredibly hyped up and anticipated game, right? Like think about the fact Sonic 06 came out. So Sonic Adventure 2 came out in like 2001 2002 um sonic 06 came out four years later there were a number of sonic games between sonic adventure 2 and and sonic 06 yeah and 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 they weren't bad there wasn't this you know there wasn't this void there wasn't this unfinished story right that that was there you know like the whole like shadow dying was was like man that was a that was a rough scene and and you know you you felt that as a you know as a as a 10 or 11 year old or whatever um but even before sonic 06 they did shadow the hedgehog where they basically said yes shadow survived yeah yeah they did and and shadow and i mean they had a number of like bad games but no no they were not nearly as disappointing as as kingdom hearts 3 and We've talked about this before, but this is the reason, like, let me spell out to you why Kingdom Hearts 3 was a huge disappointment, okay? Kingdom Hearts... Get your popcorn out. (laughs) Kingdom Hearts... Here we go. Kingdom Hearts... Number one, Kingdom Hearts was a phenomenal game. It was a breakthrough game. It was a game that was completely under... Like, people were unprepared for Kingdom Hearts. When Square... And I think it was Square Soft at the time. It might have been Square Enix by that point. But when Square and Disney said they were teaming up to make a game, no one believed that the game would be good. No one was like, oh, yeah, this is going to be dope. No one was like, this is going to change the landscape of games. No one said that. Absolutely no one said that. I know that no one said that because I was watching extended play at the time. I was reading the magazines. I remember like, like seeing on the the websites and all that stuff. Like nobody thought that was going to be a good game. And when it came out, Kingdom Hearts was a, was one of the most surprising games, uh, you know, around that time. Kingdom Hearts was a great game going back and playing it now there's even just like the level of polish in the battle system in the 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 way that the battle system rewards you for mastering it and getting better at it the challenge of the bosses they they didn't seem like they were just 
clumps of health bars where you just had to, like, you know, s- cut down on 57 health bars in order to feel like you were powerful. Like, feeling powerful in those boss fights, fighting Sephiroth, like, that was rewarding because you mastered the system. You mastered the combat. That was what made that game rewarding. It was a solid game. Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories came out. It was a fun spinoff. Kingdom Hearts 2 was a good follow-up. It added a lot of the the more... Um, you know, it, it, it things got a little bit lighter and... Uh, it, it continued the story and it, it also be started to begin to create, you know, that lore and Kingdom Hearts 2 was a fun game but that's when the problem started because from there Tetsuya Nomura got full of himself started sniffing his own farts yeah a lot of his own farts and, that, and th- you know, then all the spinoffs and all that jazz but the thing about the spinoffs was that you never went into the spinoff expecting the gameplay to be a, a, a Kingdom Hearts game, like a like a typical Kingdom Hearts game, because it wasn't the definitive like numbered game. You know, it wasn't uh, Kingdom Hearts or Kingdom Hearts Two, and it wasn't Kingdom Hearts Three. Um, I remember when Dream Drop Distance came out, and it, and it was like Kingdom Hearts Three D. And people were like, oh, they almost did it. And, you know, it was slightly different. The thing is, none of those were felt like they were the, the, the base experience or the base game. And then they announced Kingdom Hearts 3. After 13 years. 13 years. 13 damn years. Nothing. After 13 years of no Kingdom Hearts 3, they announce that they're finally going to do it. And in the announcement, they were like, we're going to finish this story. Now, for me, knowing Squaresoft and Square Enix, I knew that at no point were they going to stop making Kingdom Hearts games, but I did believe that they were finally going to bring some level of closure to all of these plot threads that they had pulled out. Especially in all these other games that they did with all these other spinoffs. Yeah, and, and with all the spinoffs, it was like, okay, like, they introduced things, they introduced concepts, they introduced characters that became important, or they they went deeper into some of these characters' backstories. But I was excited to finally finish the game. This game that I grew up with, this game that was a, a pretty significant part of my childhood. I distinctly remember writing knockoff stories based off of Kingdom Hearts as like a an 11 and 12 year old. I distinctly remember that. I'm designing characters based off of Sora and his big ass shoes. All of that. Clown shoes, bro. Dude, look. Look like a clown. All his zippers. All of that. All his zippers. All those zippers on his clothes. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. But. Big old baggy shorts. (laughs) So baggy. All of that, right? Like, they were finally going to finish it. And at this point, you know, 13 years... You think of all of the graphical advancements, all of the the gameplay advancements that they've had. Like Square Enix is not like hurting for for capital anymore at this point. And as the years went by, and it got delayed. This is after they and, this and, after they yeah after they, yeah after after <laughs> after they announced it. You know, there were delays. They had to change the engine. They were push- there was all this pushback. Basically, the, the typical stuff when Tetsuya Nomura is involved in directing a game. You know, the things don't go as planned. Surprise, surprise. So, finally comes out a couple years back. I think, what, 2019? Right? I think 2019 uh, was, was when... It- 2019 or 2018? I think it was like... It- 
It was at early 2019. Yeah, early 2019. Yeah. Like it was still snowing out. Finally came out, After man. Christmas. I remember. I remember. I was excited. I like. I pre-ordered the game. Downloaded it day one. I was like off of work that day, and so I dove into that game. And what happened was one of the most disappointing game experiences that I have ever been a part of. The game looked great. Oh, it looked beautiful. That's, that's, that's. I mean, you could you could see you could see all of the detail on the clothes of those disappointing ass and flat characters. That all that have no details on big ass shoes. Yeah, all, you, you all of the you can there. There's such fluidity in the motion of these characters that don't make sense that are written by like a 13 year old in the story. That in closing the story, it got more convoluted. So convoluted. And you, know, you make a really good point, yeah. and no one talks about this. And it's the writing is the weakest part of of Kingdom Hearts three. I mean that there's plenty of issues. But the biggest one's the writing. Like you just said, I don't think anyone said this. Written feels like it's been written by a thirteen year old. If you go back to the first one, when we were kids, that the concepts felt super deep. Mm. The battle between light and darkness within yourself. You got edgy Riku who's like a teenager, mm. and we're thinking he's like the coolest dude because he's so edgy, right? And you got Sora, the pure-hearted dude, mm-hmm. who's you. And, you know, back then, that was top-tier writing. Yeah. Top-tier, you know. And then you get number two. Now we're, it's, we're growing up with it. Now we're the edgy one. Yeah. Yeah, we got a dark side now. We even got a dark mode. Yep, yeah. yep. <laughs> but it, it feels like it feels like when we got to Kingdom Hearts 3, um, the audience grew up, but our writer did. Yeah, exactly. Our writer exactly. Did, not grow up with, <laughs> did not grow up with the story. Like, at all. Yeah. And he, in fact, he didn't grow up. He regressed, mm-hmm. and he tried to make these childish concepts that should have stayed simple, um, not only more convoluted, but I think it really showed just how poor of a writer he really was. Yeah, yeah. Um, with certain concepts, and this guy's a grown ass man. Um, so it's not as if like, how old is how old is Seth anymore? Uh, he's uh, he's, he's got to be in his thirties. Um, like. He, uh, like I'm fairly certain he's in his thirties. I'll get it up for right now. Yeah, he's fifty one. Yeah, this is a grown ass man. This dude's lived life. How can like he's lived life? And I don't understand that a fifty year one a fifty one year old can't write I mean he could he didn't even write well enough for the thirteen for the kids that were playing the game, uh, let alone the adult. Right. It's like he regressed further. You know. I mean, he, like. Yeah. I, so that was a great point. I wanted to just talk about that real quick. No one talks about that. That his writing is just absolutely abysmal. Um, it's great for a, a child, um, but even that got worse. I mean, if you look at some of these cutscenes um, with the dialogue. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh! Like, who wrote this? Like, yeah, it's terrible. Um, I I, I don't forget like what Riku's talking to Mickey, and Riku's like, uh, and you know these Japanese characters always be having you know PTSD memory flashbacks in the middle of doing something, and we see what they see, but no one else does. And everyone just kind of taking it back, but they kind of get it. Mm-hmm. Mickey's like, what was that? Riku's like, I don't know. Must have been a memory. Mickey's like, why tell me about it? He's like. No, not really. <laughs> Mickey's like, well, was it a good memory? I don't know. I think so. <laughs> Sounds like a good memory. <laughs> Who the fuck wrote this? <laughs> what? I'm like, oh my I've gosh. I've never seen cringier dialogue. Yeah. And, and it was never this bad. Like, if you go back to the first game, there was some cheesy dialogue. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. But you kind of expected it was the first outing. Number two really cleaned it up, at least for me. There were some parts that didn't make much sense. But when you get the 
full backstory. Like there's one scene where he says "Silence Trader" to Sora. Mm -hmm. Sora's like super confused, but then you find out that it's because it's Roxas. Right, that yeah, whole thing. Yeah, it, 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 makes, it makes sense. That, yeah, that, that, like the the sense. story still remember. made sense in Kingdom Hearts two, right? I, they added right. new elements, and this is I think this is one of the biggest differences between the two games is that Tetsuya Nomura was not writing it, right? The thing I, I've said this before that Tetsuya Nomura is he come he has some really cool ideas, but he is not an executor, right? Like he is an ideation person, one hundred percent. He has really he has great he's a a great artist, like graphical yeah. designer. Like he he knows what looks cool. He knows uh, how to to create like like a brand really kind of with the art and the graphics that he does but he's a terrible writer and he's not a good terrible. and he's not a good director either because again the direction part of it is what what goes into the the actual um the 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 project scope of the game and setting those deadlines and making sure that you're on pace and almost every project that Tsutsuya Nomura has directed has been incredibly behind schedule yeah this one was not only incredibly behind I mean look I bought a PS4 no I bought a PS3 when it was really supposed to come up for the PS3 mm -hmm. um, trying to buy this game and it's like nope we're actually going to put on the PS4 um, instead this is how delayed this was. Mm -hmm. Like people are like it's, it's it's announced for the PS3, but the whole engine fiasco thing. Oh, we got to put it on the PS4 instead. This is how much time is between that. And while this is going on, I think they put out another spin-off game for the DS, Dream Drop Distance. Yeah, yeah, um, yep. And and I know I was infuriated when that came out because I was like, just make Kingdom Hearts three. Yeah, everybody just was like that. Kingdom Hearts and that's 3. the thing. Like just yeah. You're focusing so much time and resources on spin-offs that for for um for all the purpose um at first they did not matter they were almost in th it was more for the lore if you were a shoot if you were a super fan you could play this to tide you over mm -hmm. um for example chain of memories you did not have to play chain of memories to know what happens in kingdom hearts 2 it's much better if you do right that's for sure um but you can it it, it, it tells you enough what happened in between to let you know what happened yeah so you don't have to. And then all the games after that, like 365 over 2, uh, Birth by Sleep, all felt like anthology games that was like, hey, you know this Kingdom Hearts brand that you like? Mm -hmm. Hey, here's a game that kind of tied you over until we do this. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, yeah, all these side games actually all matter now. Yeah, yeah. All of them. Yeah, so if you haven't bought the four different systems to play all the different games, yeah, it sucks to be you. Oh yeah, you, you know, like character Sora. Yeah, we're, we're instead of you know we're gonna put that on the DS real quick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and um, instead of putting our resources and our writing staff on the new one, um, we're gonna go and do the side game. But you're gonna love the, the last mm -hmm. game. And so I think they almost shot themselves in the not oh no they did shoot themselves in the foot because they built all this hype mm -hmm. with all these side games, making them all relevant to the build, building of this massive story. Yeah. Um, and instead of making them all in anthology stories where, you know, you could dive into it if you wanted to, but you don't have to for the sake of the game. When they made all that relevant, they set themselves up for failure to tie all that together at the end. And to be honest, they didn't have to tie all of it together. Yeah, they, really did. they, they didn't. I they did didn't. Not care. It could have they, easily they, just they been a different themselves. thing. Yeah, it could have just been, they, those could have been just separate stories that were in the same world, same universe. You know, maybe you know, maybe you have a connection here or there of like, oh, there's this this person in this other game who is like a shopkeeper in this one or something like that. Like, that would be fine. But the the fact that they, uh, like I said, they pulled all of these threads and they were supposed to neatly wrap them all back together. And when it all came back together, they were separate blankets and separate patches. That were supposed to be of the same blanket that just never really fit together, and the patches looked yeah. great, but <laughs> it it didn't work as a as an actual blanket because it didn't actually serve its purpose. And like on top of the so on top of the story, the gameplay was extremely redundant or annoying, yep. right? Like it was super easy. Yeah, like all of the combat was super easy. On the, even upon release, the hardest difficulty. 
I only died one time. And that was because I got up and went to the kitchen and came back. There was one situation where I accidentally, like, I didn't pause a cutscene. And I got up, set my controller down, came back, and I was in the middle of a boss battle. I had been in the middle of a boss battle for, like, a whole minute and a half. And I still wasn't dead. Hey, okay, for a good two minutes. On, at a boss. You know, who's supposed to be a challenge. That, man, that... Oh. And the game went through the production hell. Like, there were several worlds. Um, the most, the worst one was definitely Frozen. For whatever reason, I don't understand why Disney all of a sudden got super careful with their properties all of a sudden. Because, like, in the original one, in the original Disney World, you know, you had different characters that came back, and the story changed a bit. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, people were different villains and stuff like that. It was it was cool. Frozen was the worst one of this, where you literally were watching the movie Frozen. Yeah, all of the like, cutscenes were basically a, just co like, copy and paste of the movie in the engine. Dude, dude low key, it, not low key. This is this is go. If everyone listening, go watch Let It Go. All they did was cut and paste Mickey Donald. <laughs> Not making that with Goofy, Donald, and Sora into the thing. They don't even interact with Elsa. They're just watching her sing as we watch her sing. The whole <laughs> damn song. Right. Oh, I, I've never seen something so lazy in my life. Like, you just cut and paste them in there, and then they don't interact with her afterwards either. You go all of this damn mountain, <laughs> this damn mountain, to get blown to the bottom. Without even interacting with the person you were supposed to interact <laughs> with. That makes no sense. Now, there have been some big brain theories as far as, like, Elsa's supposed to be the final uh, be the final boss. Um, but they didn't want to do that. They didn't want to... Uh, Disney interfered a lot with what they want to do with that world. What they did with, like, Tangled as well. And a, and a couple other things. And, again, if you were having all these issues, why put that world in there to begin with? Yeah. And, the, and, and so many other ones you could have used. And, and I, I honestly, like, you know, people can make that argument all they want to, but there are, there were, what they did in, in previous worlds, in, in previous Kingdom Hearts games, was they would put characters, like, like, they would, you would still play through kind of the story for the most part, right? Like, you would still play through a lot of, like, segments of the story or a particular movement, uh, or a particular movie. Um, and kind of like result, kind of kind of get to the same resolution that happens in the actual movie, but the characters would be the the Kingdom Hearts characters like the Heartless, the Nobodies, like Sora, Donald, and Goofy, like all of them, like there was a there was a slightly different interaction, and they actually had a role in what was happening. A lot of these stories were basically. Oh, there's Heartless here. There's an Organization 13 member here while the story is happening. Oh, and that was such a waste of time. Every Organization 13 member that showed up that did absolutely nothing. Right. Like the, uh, yellow, so first off, you killed them all, which I don't understand why. They, no one dies in this anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, I, like, for whatever reason, for whatever reason, in the first Kingdom Hearts, death was something. When you died, you died. Kingdom Hearts 2. All right, so now we got nobody, so you kind of die for the most part, yeah. but you, you pretty much stay dead unless you're super special. You know, there's some cases where, you know, you got to have Princess Heart revive you. You know, that's why Sora got brought back from the dead. So, okay, so Sora's a special case. You get to number three, every person you already killed is alive again. Yeah. Everybody. No one can die. And they even admit, it's like, yeah, if we die again, we just come back as this, and we just reform, and then we can just become another nobody again if we take our Heartless out and stuff like that, which creates a whole other thing. Then what the hell is Yeah, the like, point? what What are the stakes of, at this point? There's, there's no stakes. There's none. Especially when you go back in time at the end game. And, oh, and by the way, guys, this is all spoilers. Spoilers for the game. Don't play it anyway. But <laughs> when you talk about... But, we talk about difficulty of the game. The game was super easy. I only died once. I died on the final boss when they did the inverted controls flying through the air. And I was tired as hell <laughs> at this point. 
<laughs> yeah, you were just like, and man, I, I'm just I trying to finish this. I, and I, I, I didn't even care at that point. That's the only time I died. It's like it literally inverted the controls. You're literally flying in the air with inverted controls, <laughs> and you got this dude hitting you with like 16, 17 swords. Yeah. And yeah, I, I and I'm at like three o'clock in the morning. I'm ready to be done with this, but I, I'm at the final thing. Yeah. I died once. It happens. But the fact is, is that it wasn't challenging. The game was half finished. Mm-hmm. I mean, like they didn't even use Final Fantasy um, for whatever reason. Yeah, they yeah. didn't bring. They, yeah, they didn't like, even. It felt like you're playing half. Yeah, game. and and the thing is, we've done. We we did a podcast uh, episode on Kingdom Hearts three when it came out. Um, if uh, if you're listening to this, it will it should be up on uh, on Podbean and Spotify. Um, by the time that you're hearing this, um, Sly Gang, but the the, the th- we've already we've aired our grievances on Kingdom Hearts three, but this was just the backstory. This was the reason why I had so much bitterness when they were like Sora is the last character for Smash because I was I I think I I feel like I still had the PTSD of playing that game. <laughs> and having my heart broken, and then I and, and then I see him, and I'm like, nah, man, nah, nah, get the, get, I, I, I like, I, ref, I like, I, I'm, I'm not excited about this, you know, I'm not excited about no. this. I, I love Smash, um, and I, I love Smash Ultimate, right? Uh, I think, I, I think what they did with Smash Ultimate, honestly, I feel like this should be the last Smash Brothers game, like. It's not going to be like they're probably going to come out with another one on like the next system or whatever. Smash Ultimate two or something. Yeah. Um, Smash Ultimate Ultimate. Yeah, but uh, but I I I like the fact that they had all of these characters from all of these different games that they added. Honest, but and I think it, it's it's a very it, yeah it's very difficult for me to be excited about that just because of how terrible i feel like the legacy of kingdom hearts has become at this point um it's almost like sonic where like it used to be this it it, it, like legacy wise it's not as bad as sonic because kingdom hearts hasn't been around for as long but it is like sonic in the fact that it used to be this really great thing that surprised a lot of people that a lot of people are like it's very dear to them and now it's kind of just this waste of of time. In now potential. I can understand where I can understand where you're coming from, and you know what? This and you know when you when you bring up Sonic, I think the same thing that happened with uh, with Sora. To be perfectly honest, I'm I'm seeing this as you know Sonic needed some cash. Like, <laughs> hey man, you know if you want you want to be in one of my video games, and Sonic's like, I got some bangers out there. It's like. Hey man, you have a banger a minute. <laughs> I think you need to uh, work for me for a minute. And work, but I hate you. I mean, like you don't hate this money though, right? To be and and to, to be fair, <laughs> um, this was actually the. I believe that this was the the fan. Like I think it was the fans that 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 got Sora into Kingdom Hearts. I think there was an overwhelming amount of people who wanted. Sora in Kingdom Hearts. I believe that they did a fan poll like years ago, and Sora was yeah, the one was... that people um, that people voted for. Yeah, I was definitely one of those people because I mean I wanted Sora in this game just because I thought it'd be cool. Mm-hmm. You know, I have my gripes about Kingdom Hearts three. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a lot of them. We don't have to go through all that again. We'll be here for another three hours. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was one of those people that really wanted sort of be in the game, especially if they sh- showed Cloud and Sephiroth. Yeah. Um, and they started bringing in more characters from Final Fantasy and um, from from that area because it's like, oh, why not have Sora in this game? He kind of fits with his character going from different worlds, different worlds. Help, why not? Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so I was one of those people that was super excited to excited to with the idea of Sora being in it, not actually thinking about what it would mean if he was in it. Yeah, yeah. And what I mean by that, it just, it sounded like a cool idea. Like, hey man, we got a game with all these characters, all these characters in it, who do you want to be in it? And it's like, I want my man Sora to be in it. And it's like, all right, how would that work? And it's like, 
I, I I didn't think about all that. I mean, like when you put it that way, I guess we could have like got like Rayman or something. <laughs> I mean, like I mean, I could. I mean, I guess we could have got Crash Bandicoot. I mean, like they're probably a little easier to put into a a beat 'em up that a beat 'em up like uh, Super Smash Bros. Like, yeah. like like you asked me what I wanted. I didn't think about how it would make it happen. I just wanted you to make it happen. And, and you to know? be to and, be fair too, like I. None of this is uh, a review on the gameplay of Sora being added to Smash. I think, honestly, uh, they like, they integrate all of these characters well. They do a, a right. like uh, I I I think that there is a I, that's part of the reasons why I love Smash Ultimate is because every one of these characters that have been added to this game, there's a lot of detail and reasoning. And uh, as to why they they add these characters, why they design the characters, why certain suits are added, you know, all of that stuff, th- there's there's reasoning behind a lot of it, right? And I think that's one of the things yeah. that I do like about Smash. So this is not a this is not an indictment against. A, like I said, I have a lot of respect for Masahiro Sakurai. He's one of my favorite, you know, game directors. You know, mainly because when he directs a game, it actually comes out when it's supposed to. But also... Actually works for the story. <laughs> um, at least for the most yeah. part. I mean, like... I mean, in Wario in the comments, there's, there's not really much of a story of Smash. Exactly. It's more metaphorical than anything. It's supposed to... Yeah. You know, for all those people that don't have friends. No. To play, but, play the game and lock all the But I, no one... But no one was, was coming into Smash Ultimate saying, Man, I've been waiting for this story to be resolved. For thirteen that's years, saying. that that was not the that's expectation. Saying, so man. that's not no, even. Everyone, 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 that's not even. Says, so don't even bring that up, people. So I wanted a game where I could play some of my favorite characters and have someone beat up Mario in his freaking plumber face. Yeah. I mean, like the, to to Lord's point. I mean, like they brought in Kazuya from Tekken, uh, and Ryu and Ken from Street Fighter. I mean, we just got a Tekken versus Street Fighter game a couple years back. Mm-hmm. But for them to bring, so they already integrated those two games together to make that work. But then Sakurai integrated those two different fighting games into his people would say cartoony beat em up mm-hmm. um, brawler and made that work. And it's balanced. I will say some. I, what I have to say about this game is that it is pretty balanced. I mean, like I have not seen at least online gameplay when I was at least Kazuya was pretty busted when I first watched it, but every new character is busted when they first come out because no one knows how to beat him just yet. Um, Sephiroth was the same way. Everyone's like, Sephiroth is so busted. And then, you know, three weeks later, everyone's like, yeah, I, I know how to fight Sephiroth. Sephiroth's no longer busted. Everyone says the same thing. Yeah. They moan. And they're going to say the same, same thing about Sora when he comes out. Sora's so busted. He's this, this, and this. And the next thing you know, it's like, yeah, Sora's low tier. You know? Because um, that's what they do with all the new DLC characters. But what I loved about Sakurai was that this dude had the nerve when the camera came back to him to be just like, what? I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> like, dog. You have to play the camera off that hard, man. <laughs> like, I, it's like it's like when your parents get you, it's like when your parents got you a Christmas gift that was on your Christmas list. And it's like, how do you know? And it's like, how does Santa know? And it's like, I know you bought this, Dad. <laughs> like, I don't, need, I don't need you to patronize me, man. I know you made a deal with the deal with the mouse like get out of here so i'm excited to uh see sora in the game i never thought we'd get it um it's cool to ask for it i didn't get it so it's gonna see be interesting to see how it actually plays out i think it's funny that they did his original iteration from the first kingdom hearts game mm-hmm. and not his kingdom hearts 3 outfit like they're almost i feel like they're trying to do some damage control um, well, I think I, I think mean, all I mean, of those, like all of the other characters, they are alternate outfits, and I think and he does have some of his later outfits in he there. Has so his, he has his Kingdom Hearts two. I know he has his Kingdom Hearts two outfit. I mean, every everyone has like all like the characters have like eight different outfits. So, um, hope he gets his pirate one, dude. I hope he gets his big hero six outfit because I don't care that level sucked balls, <laughs> but <laughs> but the arm was dope though. Then and one last point about Kingdom Hearts three because we can move on from that. Um, for all those that um, are praising the villain um, Xehanort for you know changing his mind at the end, y'all are. I don't want to re- read any of the books that you guys write. I don't want to be any any movies that um, <laughs> you guys make. 
I don't want to hear your opinion on any good villain because any villain that slaughters millions of people for the sake of restarting the world and is, you know, just told, stop that. <laughs> and just, he just says, okay. Okay. Is not a good villain. <laughs> not at all. You can't build up this, you can't build up this villain like this for all these games. 13 the, years. Mr. 13 years. Bro, that, 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 that would guys... be like if Thanos in the MCU did all of the stuff that you see him doing in just the two movies, but they built him up for the for like 20 years for 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 like like 10 years, 13 however long it was. They did all of that. They built this this character up for 13 years. And then as soon as he gets the infinity stones, Tony Stark just like steps up to him. And the ghost of Gamora comes while Tony Stark is like fighting him. And they're just like, stop it. Don't do it. Leave it to him. Leave it to them. Leave it to them. Leave it to them. Leave what to them? Leave what? <laughs> You're, you won. You did it. I, you made the x blade to start the world from darkness. Leave it to them. Leave what to them? I don't even know what you're doing. Yeah. They don't even know what you're doing. What are you leaving? Yeah. What are you leaving? I don't understand. And he's just like, you're right. Okay. Yeah. Dude, how, how, wh why'd you kill all those people? Why? You, you, people, you know what Heartless are? The people that lost their hearts. You know how many people he's literally slaughtered to get a Heartless? A lot. And you get a, like, it's a lot of people he's killed. World he's devoured. And all it, his buddy, the ghost from the past, comes up and says like, hey man, don't do that, man. That ain't cool. Leave it to them, man. You're just gonna be just fine. But I have all this, all this backstory and lore that I've shown the people about why I'm bad and evil and, you know, and kind of sympathetic. Yeah, but man, that ain't cool though, man. Just leave it to Sora. Sora's basically Jesus. <laughs> dude, can't dude do. can't die, so you know. <laughs> I mean, like you've killed him like eight times now, and he's he's come back on every single time. I mean, like just leave it to him. Yeah, yeah. Like, do I work? Do I? I mean, you. I know you won. I know you won. But like, come on, man. That ain't cool, man. Come smoke some weed with me, bro. Come on, man. Come join me in the afterlife, bro. I've been waiting for you. Yeah. And it's like, okay. Oh, and that BS. Oh, the worst part of the game. That BS chess game. That stupid chess game that they were playing in the prologue it's so symbolic you know what I, there's a oh, there's I a there's it. a vein that is like protruding from your forehead right now oh we should gosh. probably move on oh to something that's like we, better dog how, how are you gonna have one piece and be just like i win well actually you don't because the light has special powers bro i thought we were playing chess man what the hell <laughs> yeah <laughs> Dog. Oh my gosh, it's Suya Amora. Stop writing. Stop it. Stop it. That was stupid. It wasn't symbolic at all. If you're trying to make a, a Christ reference, it was done very poorly. Everything was poor, and that chess game was so infuriating because Homeboy won with skill and planning, and you won by reviving your entire board the last second after you get all your pieces taken. It makes no damn sense. It's all part of the plan of the light. You mean to suck? That's the part that's the plan of the light just to suck? No, no, nah. -ha. I'm flipping the table. Go ahead, darkness. Flip the table. Yeah. Start over. Yeah, it's a big no for me, Chief. So anyway, eh, so in other news, <laughs> we got some other stuff going on. So finally, off of that, um, <laughs> I didn't expect us to be talking this lot about Kingdom Hearts, but I should know. Yeah, yeah. The nah, you, you, you unlock you, you. That was a can of worms. Mentioning the that 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 oh, announcement. Man. Oh my goodness. No. Nah. Oh, that was a uh, that that's on me, guys. That's on me. Um, <laughs> Good that's grief. on me. I don't know, man. The uh, I mean, in terms of uh, the, that's not the only uh, that's the only thing. But I mean, um, what a, what did we just get done watching? Um, what was it called? It was something as if it had an if in it. I don't know. Um, um, how that. if? Why? How why if? if? Is is if? Uh, is if? 
Uh, who, uh, I mean, like, who if? Right. Got you. So, so no, DC's. It's, it's so, oh yeah. So DC's. <laughs> why if? Um, had their final episode. <laughs> Dog, what if they did? What if DC did come with a fire? <laughs> 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 no one. <laughs> Everyone always asks, what if? Well, DC has their, their Injustice Wyatt. movie coming out pretty soon. so And their animated movies have been the only thing that is worth, you know, watching from them. So, But yeah, so uh, speaking of animated, what if? Had their season finale. Mm-hmm. Um, what are your initial thoughts? Well, I got to say this. So so I was telling Lord, I was telling Lord, and I got to say this publicly before he calls me out on it. Um, let's, get, let's get this out there. I thought that this might tie into some other movies in the MCU, like the Multiverse of Madness. I was wrong in my speculation. <laughs> Turns out it's just gonna be self. No, so the thing. Okay, yeah. I'm I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna extend this olive branch to you, in that technically, yes, this is all in the same multiverse, but. I th- the 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 statement that I said was that yeah this isn't going to have any like lasting effect in anything that is happening in the MCU like in the the the, the um the live action movies or shows um so you're not you're not wrong but you're also not right so <laughs> you know that's a win. you know guys that's typically a win because you know, a lot of times I'm wrong and I get no all in play. <laughs> Where it's just like, yeah, you're just straight up wrong. That doesn't make any sense. Why? Like, why? Why? Why are you talking? Like, I, I, why would you think that? And I have to justify it and make it make sense. And I can make it make sense in my own head, but you I know. mean, yeah, you mean you were you were you were in mock trial, so you know. You... Yeah, I can, I can, I can, I can make it. I can. You can, you can bring anything, that that man. argument around. <laughs> Somehow, some way, give me time, give me time. But it did finish. It did. And, yeah. Um. Um, um, we'll give some of our thoughts on it mm-hmm. um, because now that What If is over, what is the next Marvel thing? We have um, we got Hawkeye Eternals coming up. Well, in terms of yep. shows, we've got Hawkeye, but in terms of movies, yeah. we've got Hawkeye Eternals and then the Spider Man movie, which we've already yeah, given our so, thoughts on our how excited we are for that Eternals movie coming out. But with oh my gosh, with What If, in my ass. <laughs> but if with What If wrapping up. Um, <laughs> I mean, you already you already know toilet. you already know spoilers, but um, but yeah. So the 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 last two episodes were were really interesting because it kind of brought everything full circle with um, with what the universe in which it's like. What if Ultron succeeded? Um, what if Ultron won? And he first of all. I think we've uh, we had already established that Thanos just kind of got hoed in the previous episode that they he was nerfed, in. They've nerfed him in the entire series. They said like, how do we make <laughs> how do we make everyone like forget about Thanos? Let's make him into kind of a punk. How about that? Like we every, he ever he just gets one shotted by everybody. Yeah. Now now episode two he didn't get one shotted, but he got beat up by one of his underlings. Um. That he was a- easily more powerful than in the Infinity movie, right? And in this, you know, Vision, which is Ultron at this point, um, just cuts him in half. Yeah, <laughs> and in, in, thinking, in, in a matter thinking, of seconds, Sue. <laughs> a matter of seconds, you're thinking like, where the hell was that in Infinity War? Was that like, that was an option? My thing is like, like even in yeah, I was like, so Vision could have clearly done that. So that's what I was thinking. That's one definitely one of the things I was thinking. But I was like. How do you like? I'm I'm still lost on how you still lose with the Infinity Stones. Like, how do you well, still lose? I don't understand well, that. It's well, I mean, like, it's not easy. It's to do, and we saw it's that, actually we, it actually is that. pretty easy to do because you could literally just stop time, teleport somewhere else destroy whatever planet people are on there are a number of things that you can do you have the infinity stones yeah the time one and here's the thing with what they did with episode nine they really because like in in in, in game like thanos already won in infinity right already won and so how do we nerf him 
well, let's have him use the stones, and he basically cripples himself using the stones, and then he destroys the stones, so that he really doesn't have them anymore. All right, that way we don't have to worry about how do we beat him with all the stones. This, he's literally fighting with all the Infinity Stones, making a uh, multiverse being mm -hmm. go all out and almost, and he defeats him because he has to go and look for help. Right. Um, and then come episode nine, yeah, let me just hit you with female Captain America here. And uh, that'll, that'll work. Like, it, it's, it, it feels like the power scaling is kind of all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Now, mind and, you... And uh, mind this, you this is... A... So this is the other thing, too. Like, he's a computer, right? Like, like he's an, he's an AI. Right? Like, computers have, like, multiple processors. This is supposed to be, like, the most... This is a Tony Stark AI. Right? The... the from what I understand, the dude should be able to process multiple things and like thousands times faster than most like normal humans. Cause like even even with like super soldier serum, like your processing is kind of like peak human processing, but it's you're not processing at a computer speed. And you think about all the people right. who were just humans in all of that? Come I mean, on, son. I mean, like, just, just, just the episode before, we watched him take out Carl, Carol Danvers. Mm -hmm. right? We watched him take out Captain Marvel. Who, so, might I add, why didn't you just take out the stones? You're like, he, she was giving him the business. She had his hand on her chest. She, she had his hand on her chest. Other than the exact same thing. Just pull it just out. Pull, just Carol, pull out just one pull, of them. Just, just pull, pull out one of them. Pull, and what? what makes it worse is that freaking T'Challa did it. I'm like, where did she yeah. Captain Marvel use it to he pull did that? He chest? did that. She, bruh. <laughs> Captain Marvel Be was beating chest his chest. ass for like a full 30 seconds. You could have pulled out two what or three of them. Repellent. She could have pulled out all of them. Put a hole in his chest. This is ridiculous. Was like, it, what made it worse is that since the child. Did, so the thing with this series is that. The problem is that after the fact, we see some other character do it. It makes us think, why did the character before just do that? No, I, um, because I literally, no, I time. literally thought that while watching the the eighth episode was like when she, no, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. You're thinking that just take the stuff out of his chest, and you're thinking, and then she dies. You're thinking, well, maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're thinking you're trying, so you're trying to do mental gymnastics of why she couldn't do that besides just being played by Brie Larson, <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> You're trying to figure it out, but then the next episode is like, "Hey, that tactic you were thinking of, yeah, we did that," and it's like it doesn't make it okay because now I have more questions. Right? Is she just that stupid in the last one? Is that is that it? Because like that's not cool. You can't just do her like that. Right? Like the child as a human sneaks up on the dude. Now, mind you, um, I did like that. Uh, I mean, Doctor Strange is the MVP of this team. Like without strange, they all would. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. Like every everybody who is just a regular human, even people who are like a superhuman, would have been super dead. That super dead. I mean, he put a protection spell on him. He nerfed the power. He nerfed the time stone because he also had his own time right. stone, so they cancel each other out. Um, and then, you know, any galaxy busting moves that Ultron could pull out, he could essentially nerf because of all the stuff he's absorbed at this point in time. Mm -hmm. So basically, he was the perfect counter to Ultron. And that's the only thing I that's the only thing that made it not okay, but made, didn't take me out of the whole battle with them. Because when they're fighting them, he's like, and even Ultron's like, hold on, wait a minute. If I kill Strange, I kill all of y'all. Like, y'all ain't shit. It's Strange that's doing all this stuff. And then immediately he's like, I gotta go after Strange. And I like, like, you talk about the computer thing. I love that the computer was like, the computer's even getting frustrated. Like, y'all should really be dead. Like, <laughs> Like, y'all should really be dead. Why are y'all this hard to kill? Right. Because I have killed a lot of people. Like, a lot of people. And y'all still standing. And when he puts two and two together, that felt... It felt good. It felt good in my heart that he did. Yeah. Because at least I knew that it's at least consistent. He acknowledges... He see, killed. what happened... He's frustrated trying to figure see, it out. See, what, ha what happened was that uh, one of the... One of the, the AI... In um in Ultron, like one of the 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 CPUs was like, "Hey yo, Doctor Strange got all of his lives still. He still got all his stops." <laughs> they were like, 
<laughs> man, computer just like, oh, dog, you're right. Dog, you're right. You mean if I take out Strange? Like, it's the thing. Dog, that's what I've been saying the whole time, man. Take him out. Like, it's like, oh, man. Yo, yo, Larry, we got, well, Larry, we giving you a promotion when we get back to <laughs> the main computer, man. I'm going to let the master AI know that you did a good job here today. They're like, don't worry, I got you. But I thought that was good that, I mean, I thought that Dr. Trace Kieran's whole team made sense. Mm-hmm. I was pissed as, I'd be pissed as hell if Dr. Uh, Dr. Strange um, having to uh, just watch that pocket universe for the end of time. I'll, I'll be like, yo, watch it. You can't. I mean, that's it. better. Give me. Eight. Nah, I mean, <laughs> the dude has absorbed but like all of the elder, the eldritch beings that existed in like a, a time. So like, his, his so you can't, you yeah. can't, you can't just be like, all right, I'll let you off on a warning. Come on, son. Well, it's and plus, it's plus it's his punishment too, which is why Strange is okay with it because he basically ended his own universe. Mm-hmm. So like, he's got, I got his. So he's. So essentially, Strange was like, "This is the least what I. It's the least I that can was do. that was the so watch. That was the watcher <laughs> extending an olive branch. That's what that was." <laughs> yeah, he's like, "Hey man, look, you can be bored by yourself, or at least I can give you something to watch." Right. You know, I, I'll, I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you, know, you a TV. <laughs> <laughs> give you a TV, man. You can watch your own fucking universe. So I'm watching you watching them. You know, that's something. So you get a taste of what's like being me. Yeah, every 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 so, year or so, the Watcher adds an update where he downloads a new character into the. <laughs> <laughs> so we were on for that. <laughs> we were on for that. We were on for that. Uh, um, so other thoughts about the, so so, uh, so other thoughts about the episode. Oh, the, the, um, I thought yeah, I thought it was funny as hell that they literally recruited Killmonger for the sheer fact that he's been scummy and scheming. I thought that was funny as hell. Yep. Like, because I was thinking the whole time, like, you already got the Chala here. You, you already got a bruiser. You already got a tech genius. I'm like, why do we need Killmonger here? And it's just, and I was just like, because he didn't do any, he, like, didn't contribute anything. He really did Like, at he all. He really did And But he, but he was only there to portray shit. And I thought that, that was funny as hell the Watcher planned all that out. Because I was thinking to myself, why are you got two people from Wakanda here? Like, two, <laughs> yeah. like why? And and one of them That's ain't it. even doing nothing. T'Challa was doing everything. T- T'Challa everything, was man. T'Challa was was stealing the stone, and I feel like T'Challa was the most vulnerable person out there. Which just goes to yeah. show who T'Challa is as a person. Like regardless of if he's Star Lord or Black Panther, dude is gonna be like, yo, square up, and it's gonna there. yeah, and it's gonna be in gonna be in his shit. That was that was the thing that was I think that was one of the best parts was like he was like like uh like Captain Carter was doing her thing she was definitely doing her thing but she was a super soldier right and and right, and, and that is and that's that is kind of that is like Peggy Carter's you know whole that's her character too but she was a super soldier and she has a vibranium shield <laughs> the child just got a gun. <laughs> Right, and, he, and, for, and for all those people, Peter Quill, before, and Peter Quill didn't know this, but Peter Quill's durable as hell because he's half God. Like, he, because yeah. Of, because of, uh, he, the half yeah, he, he's a half celestial. He so yeah. <laughs> he's celestial. At least half until Ego died. So, so all his life, Peter's been like, Peter's had a buff he didn't even know about. Right. T'Challa has always been just a man. Think about that. So all the stuff that Peter Quill barely survived, and everyone's like kind of confused, like, oh man, he must be super lucky and all that stuff to be able to take hits like that. We find out later that he's been buffed up because he's half celestial. T'Challa is is just an earthling. Right. And this dude's going toe to toe with people like Thanos. Well, not Thanos. I mean, yeah, kind of like Thanos, but like he's doing all kinds of galactic missions. This dude's saving the planet, saving all kinds of other worlds. He recruited Thanos. Sorry, he recruited Thanos. Mm-hmm. And he's just a man. And he's going to toe toe with Ultron. This dude just took his bare hand and grabbed a soul stone. Yeah. His on, on nothing. Yeah. Hand. So, so it, I think that was like, that was definitely one of the best parts. It was just, he was just like, he was like, yo, we here to fight. We're going to fight. <laughs> like, that's it. But then Killmonger, just being a total douchebag that he is, um, being chosen just to betray stuff is absolutely hilarious, especially um, at the end where he's like, Come on, yo, we can fix our world. And no one was buying that shit at all. Everyone was Yeah, like, everybody was like, bro, yeah. word? <laughs> no. Word? Even Black Widow, like, whose entire world was gone, was not like, was was like, bro, you bugging. <laughs> like, not buying it at all. 
I think I feel like we missed an episode because I I don't know all the research that. Oh, Gamora. Was we, like was yeah with the Gamora. Yeah, I and I had Dark Scar episode. I do not remember that episode. That was not an episode that I know of. So I feel like I I, I feel like like I don't know if there was like a production issue and they didn't air that, but it felt like that was supposed to be aired. Yeah. Because like everyone else, they introduced them like we already saw their story. Yeah. And Gamora and theirs, like that was the only one where we didn't know anything. Yeah. Like Yeah. And it feels like there was supposed to be an episode with that. Even with the even with the uh, the title card and everything, like the way she's on there, I expected to have an episode with her mm-hmm. um, on there, like everyone else. So I'm gonna if you guys know if there's anything production wise that affected that, um, let us know in the comments because I would have loved to have seen that story because it's because it, Tony Stark's on Sakaar, so was Gamora, and Gamora killed Thanos. Um, I would have enjoyed to see that. Like, what what if Bruce? What if Tony Stark went to Sakaar instead of go? Instead of the Hulk, yeah, that would have been interesting. I don't know how that would have worked, but that would have been interesting. Um, other points for um, the last episode of the What If, um, uh, they were keeping they're keeping the uh, the trend for Captain Carter doing shot for shot of Steve Roger movies. <laughs> um, I thought that was I thought that was cool. They're at least keeping it consistent. So the first time we see her, it's the first Avengers. Second like, time we see her, it's the Winter Soldier, and um, <laughs> we even we might we might even have our our own Bucky Barnes, not, but that's Bucky. You think it might be a brainwashed Steve Rogers in the Hydra Stomper? You don't know, <laughs> you don't know. But yeah, I <laughs> they teased it at the end. <laughs> I'm like, man, uh, like, bro, just let Steve die. <laughs> let him go, dog. You see her face when uh, uh, when she's asked Doctor Strange. Oh like, yeah, is yeah. There, is, there, is, there a, is there a Captain Carter in your universe? Like, actually, no. Steve actually became Captain America, and she's like, Oh, I would love oh, to see love that. To that. <laughs> I was like, like you, you thirsty <laughs> ass, thirsty <laughs> ass. Oh my gosh. So thirsty. Yeah, that was that was she that was said, hilarious. I, she was like, she was like, I would love, love to see that. that. I'm sure you would. <laughs> and, the, and the way she was looking at the watch, she was like, Yo, watch it. Can you like? Hook a sister up. Can you like send me that? <laughs> uh, there are millions of Steve's. Can you send me one Steve? There are millions of Steve's, man. Can you send me one of them? Like, was, the Super Soldier Steve sounds. The Super Soldier Steve sounds pretty hype, man. He was like, they don't, they don't, they don't call Steve the Hydra Stomper for no reason. You cut off one head, one pops back up. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know you got that portal magic, man. I know you got the portal magic. Open the portal up. Let me get one of the heads. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh my Peggy gosh! Yeah, that hell. was that was that was she hilarious. I mean, Steve Steve was too so when he was Captain America. So you know, it, yeah, but, it, but, but he, it's, it, it's shot for shot. It, it is shot for shot. So it's shot for shot. But at the very least, I mean, we, we didn't have Steve with this opportunity. I mean, when Steve had the opportunity to go back in time, he just. Stayed back inside with Peggy. Yeah, one hundred percent. I can't say I can't I can't say that Steve wouldn't have done the same thing because <laughs> man did just that. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, and then almost banged his uh his uh his niece, not his niece. It wouldn't be. Well, no, it's not his niece. It's, it was it was uh, her her niece. Her, her, niece. Niece. her yeah. niece. Her niece. So I mean, he's keeping it in the family at least. He's, at least it's consistent. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> but. But uh, Captain Carter, uh, that whole thing, I love their, I love her um, and Black Widow's relationship. Yeah, that, that, that was, was fun. Great. Yeah, uh, I thought that was fun. And honestly, I would watch a movie with, I would watch a, a another episode with those two doing some banter. Um, mm. And Black Widow, Cap, Cap, Captain Carter story, um, because the one thing that Captain Rogers had, uh, or that Pe- Captain Peggy has that Captain Rogers doesn't is. Um, I feel like the ability to um, clap back with uh, without uh, for a lot yeah of she's words. she's she's <laughs> much more she's much more snappy like Steve is much more is a Boy Scout right yeah he's he's a very he's, which is why it was fun when Black Widow would make fun of him because you know that's that's what she's going for because he is a Boy Scout yeah but Captain Carter you know she's dealt with adversity don't get me wrong but she's far more confident at least in that regard. Um, and so when they banter back and forth, it's very fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'd like to, and I, I would watch, I would say, I would give a, a three episode, three or four episode adventure between, you know, Captain Carter and Black Widow. I'd watch the animated series. Yeah. 
uh, three or four episodes, just to see how they kind of go back and forth. I thought I was kind of wrong with the way she was talking about um, my boy in IT. What's his name? Brendan. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who, who was it? Like because because what's it I don't, what's his name Brendan? it was something it was something where it was like it was something with a, something with a b but he was in it and she's like nah i ain't interested because he's in it that's wrong as hell that's mean as no hell. she was like she like, was like she was like was, she was like nothing good comes from like whatever the name was um yeah and i was like at least steve was like i'm just too busy why you gotta knock the man for his name that's mean. i feel like that uh, like, i feel no nah, i feel no nah, i feel like that's accurate <laughs> <laughs> And then, and my favorite clap back, Black Widow was like, well, what if his name was Steve? And it's like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, got her. Got her. Uh, got her. Yeah. Uh, and, that's, and she's like, I thought we were friends. Yeah, she put him in the coffin on that one. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, so, uh, last character we got to talk about, uh, no one cares about Thor. I didn't care. Yeah, I mean, uh, like, I, 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 I didn't, uh, he wasn't pretty, like, he was there for the comedic effect. It, it wasn't, that funny and i didn't feel like it needed to be but it was i mean it was what it was um you could you could skip that you could skip that episode of what if and be fine i think i thought i, mean, I thought i thought that episode was kind of was kind of funny because it was like a it was like a house part it was it was basically like a house party episode a, it was it was yeah, like it was a house party episode yeah house party on earth baby but loki my brother from another mother and i'm like that's not a joke i like that I see what you did there yeah <laughs> See, she did there, but um, but Thor, he was just okay. Um, and then who am I missing? Oh, I love how Doctor Strange is like the ultimate bartender. <laughs> he just has your drink on deck. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That's just he's awesome. like, yeah, I, I, I know um, what everybody drinks. I, um, am I missing anybody? Oh, we gotta talk about the Watcher himself. Talk about the Watcher. Uh, also, the this ma- so you mean to tell me that you've watched every battle that ever that ever has been, and you still get washed as an interdimensional being when <laughs> when somebody just has Infinity uh, Stones? <laughs> like word, word, dog. <laughs> and you know what's funny? So Charlie called him on. And it's like, man, you just go sneak up behind us, get a new trick. <laughs> like, right? You getting dogged by an Earthling, dog? <laughs> He gets yeah. talked by an Earthling, man, and and uh, the Watcher. Uh, I don't know what my thoughts on him. Are, well, my thoughts on the Watcher is that he's basically just a Marvel fan. That's 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 he's a, he's a, he he's us. He's an MC. He's a person who watches the 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 Marvel movies <laughs> because even better, even better, even better. He's Sakurai. He is Sakurai taking his favorite action figures and putting them in a Oh, that, that's the other thing that I said was like when he like reached down and was like picking them up. I was like, that's basically, yep. that's basically, that's basically, we're going to have Thor and then we're going to have Captain Marvel and, <laughs> and then we could have the, the Captain and then they're going to have to fight Ultron. That was, it was basically like a little kid <laughs> picking, picking Yo, their favorite toys. <laughs> Yo, so we just tied in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and Sakurai to what if Marvel. That's how good we are. We <laughs> planned this. We planned this, y'all. Because that master hand, that master hand, ain't, that master hand has always been the watcher from the first Super Smash Bros. <laughs> to the What If series. That hand has always been the watcher. He never interferes unless you piss him off. Because Master Hand was a pain in the butt to fight. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's what it felt like. He's he's us. He's a Marvel fan. Like. Because low key, uh, he only really out of all the people, he really only picked like his favorites. Yeah, he was like, he's like, he, I, I, I like this storyline, you know, like because he could have picked like any, he could have literally picked every hero. First off, he could have picked the army of Doctor Strange. That's really all you need. Yeah. Um, considering how Doctor Strange carried the entire team, um, <laughs> shoot, he could have, he could have grabbed. No, nah, I, I, I can imagine out. that there would probably would have been some, some Doctor Stranges. The, like there's a, there's only room for one Doctor Strange on the team because I can see how that that going south real quick, where they be arguing with each other, like trying to vie for supremacy. Oh, that's true. That's true. And intellectual supremacy that would probably not bode very well. Well, this is why I'm not a watcher because I probably would have stacked my team. Um, <laughs> not with Doctor Strange's though. I wouldn't have with Doctor Strange's, but I might have had two. I might have had two Doctor Strange's. <laughs> yeah. But the but the I think the the thing the big thing was like. He's very clearly just us because he was like, he was like, these like these stories are my world. 
and I will do anything to protect him. I'm like, that's that's every Marvel fan ever. This is <laughs> <laughs> and you know what's funny? He's like, I'll do anything to protect him, except intervene. Except actually do something. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot intervene. I cannot interact, but I'll protect the multiverse with everything that I have. Okay. That sounds good, man. You sound, that's, that really makes you a Marvel fan, because we know that true Marvel fans will talk a big game behind the keyboard. Mm-hmm. But face to face. But do absolutely nothing. Exactly. Do absolutely nothing. They will not interfere. <laughs> they will not interact. Uh, that... I am. I am the Marvel fan. <laughs> <laughs> I am a Marvel fan, and we're here to ponder the question <laughs> what if? <laughs> Yeah, that's literally this, the, the 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 Marvel the the Watcher is ba- is just a Marvel fan. He's a he's a he's a self insert character of every MCU fan in on the face of planet. I mean, I mean, think about it. He went. He was. He has a big head, small body. But then when he's faced with something, he gave himself a huge back armor um, that made him <laughs> godlike. If that's not a self insert character. I don't know what is. <laughs> He put in the uh, he put in the the uh, the admin cheats. Yep, <laughs> this AI is beat my ass. He Hold used on. console commands <laughs> to buff himself. Uh, so, with that all being said, how do you feel about the series overall? I mean, I thought it was fun. You know, I, I thought, um, yeah, I think there are definitely some. I think, like any anthology series, like there are definitely some episodes that are hit or miss. The the episodes are hit or miss. Um, there are some episodes that were like really good, that were really fun, um, asked some interesting questions. I thought the Killmonger, were, interestingly enough, most of the best episodes were the the Black Panther ones, which I, I wasn't like. The, I like I like T'Challa. I like Black Panther. I like elements of the Black Panther movie, but the Black Panther movie wasn't the best movie in my opinion. But I think the best episodes here oh, were the ones that don't let them hear you say that. Don't don't, don't let our community hear you bro, say I that. Will, I, I will I will come like I will I will I will defend my my uh, my stance with the best of them. It was not the best movie in my opinion. Um, did it have I think I think a lot of people conflate the quality of the movie with the cultural significance of it, and those are two different things. Um, oh yeah. Oh, he's doing it now. I'm, I'm seeing the flame in the comments. Oh, bring it on, bring it so, on. So, if anybody wants to at me, so come. On, if anybody wants to at me, come on with it. But um, with that being said, um, the episodes that had that centered around Wakanda were honestly, I feel like the best episode, the two of the best episodes in the in the series. Because the Agent Carter one, it was, it was basically a, 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 a uh, it was mostly a cut for cut. Um, redo it was a very safe episode and thereby it wasn't very interesting um the what if t'challa was star lord that was like a left field type of 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 episode um the doctor strange one was kind of depressing um but it was it was interesting you know i think it was a it was a an interesting concept i think dealing with some of the like looking at like what is really possible with magic was one of those one was one of those interesting things um the zombie one the, like i knew the zombie one was coming marvel zombies is kind of like a big is a big deal in terms of like what if uh like other universes um and then just kind of like down the line um i think the like i said the thor one was funny because it was it was cathartic because a lot of the episodes have been pretty dark the the one where like what if the earth's mightiest heroes had fallen um i almost forgot that that one existed and so, um, but yeah, so yeah, it was what it was. It was, it was good to watch, but you know, for the most part, I think, I think it was good. And I think in terms of like this being, because these episodes are Chadwick Boseman's last uh, uh, like appearances as T'Challa. And I think that is a, a really, I think that's a really heavy part. I think for me. Yeah. Like hearing him in that role again. I think that was there was something very uh, there's something very sobering and there was something just very I don't know, heavy about that, you know, of like hearing him his voice like in something new for like the last time. 
Um, and I think that was, um, yeah, I think that was particularly with the finale that that was kind of what really got me. Like every time I saw his, um, every time I saw his name in the credits, I was like preparing for that that swell. And um, and yeah, man, I think that was, I think that was good. So um, so overall, it was. A, I I really like the 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 concept of the series. I don't know if they're going to. I don't know what they're if they're going to bring it back. Um, I, I yes, they are. They it has been confirmed for a season. Okay, okay. Um, they are they're going to do that. The dates have not been released yet of when, but it has been cleared for season two. Um, on that, um, I did do some research, everybody, just now. Um, so there was this the series season one was supposed to be ten episodes, but due to COVID, they had to cut one, and they did cut. The episode, the episode that was cut was "What if Tony uh, landed on Sakar?" Interesting. Uh, what if? Because that was the um, hope. That was the Hulk Buster suit, I think that he was in, right? No, it, no. So this, so I'm reading the premise of the, the premise. Well, of the story I, but I'm, but I'm saying he's what? in the Hulk Buster suit, right? He's in. He no, he's in a. He's in a new suit. He didn't make the Hulk Buster yet. Um, based on the timeline of this, this is when. So the premise is, what if um, Tony? In the after the first attack on Earth, after he puts the the new after he uses the nuke to destroy Thanos' sort uh, forces, he doesn't fall through the portal back to Earth in time. Oh, um, and he drifts through space and falls on Sakar. Um, so he makes a big suit that looks like the Hulkbuster, but it's not the Hulkbuster. Oh, got you. Based on based on what this is. Interesting. Um, but the episode was supposed to air in season one, but due to COVID, they had to cut that episode. It will be in season two. You know, um, you know what's <laughs> You know, it was kind of it was hilarious and kind of messed up about that. Is that that would have been the one episode where Tony would have survived? <laughs> Dog, that is hilarious. It's so wrong because Tony died. Tony, like all the time. I think besides yeah. Thanos, like like I, Thanos was probably a second in terms of like people who got really who got hoed. This entire series, Tony got got messed up in like every episode he was in. I gotta say this though, because here's what's messed up about that whole thing: Thanos got messed up, and we all talked about it. Tony got messed up and died. No one gave a shit either. Yeah. <laughs> like Tony has got like at least when Thanos died, everyone's just like, "Oh man, we could have done that." Tony died, just like, "Damn, we could have just did that the whole entire time." Yeah. Like, what the hell? <laughs> like, like. I think the worst one that made no sense to me was how he died in the zombie one. So I'm like, dude, you got a suit of armor. That that like, where you, that where how, you can fly, bro. Where, where you can, can bro. How where you can you fly. Die? Like, how did you? Like, how did you die? Like, I can see Captain America. He got bit in the neck. Black Widow, just a human. So is Hawkeye. Um, T'Challa survived, which makes sense because he's covered in vibranium. So. No, they could do nothing to him. Mm -hmm. uh, Vision survived, Mind Stone, but I'm and, and then Tony died. I'm like, how the hell? <laughs> how? And I know they skipped that part because it wouldn't have made any damn sense. <laughs> but he got hold there. Um, Killmonger beat his ass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then um, another an another uh, uh, then Hank Pym. I mean, the Hank Pym one, <laughs> like the, he like died from a shot, like. Yeah, Hank Pym went through and fucked him up from the inside. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like Tony can't catch a break. Yeah, in any of these episodes. <laughs> so it was, I, I, it was it's, just, it's just hilarious that the one that they cut was the one where he would have actually lived. That's probably why they did it too. It's like yeah, we gotta be consistent. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we can't have Tony out. We can't have we can't have Tony out here surviving and shit. Like he's gotta go. <laughs> Tony's gotta go, man. So. Um. Yeah. So that's so that's so we will see that episode. Uh, next season, whenever they release that. Um, somehow Tony will probably get hoed still in that episode to keep <laughs> keep things consistent. Um, I think overall it was entertaining as a series. Yeah, sure. Entertaining for sure. sure. Um, I mean it was something to do on Wednesdays. I mean, like, I'm not gonna lie to y'all. It's it was it was it was some episodes were hit and miss. Like Lord has said here, some episodes are hit and miss. Everyone's got their own taste. Mm -hmm. Um. Because uh, I don't think anyone's gonna line up saying which episodes were they're uh, be on the same page as far as what episodes were their favorite. Um, be perfectly honest, because all of them speak to uh, everyone in different ways. But overall, I think it was a uh, a pretty good show that people all ages could enjoy. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and I will watch 
season two. I know that. I'll, I'll watch season two. I'll give it a shot. I mean, like, the Watcher can't have all try and win twice. I mean, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I don't know how the Watcher can let some of this stuff happen. I know he can't intervene. Yeah, man. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, he was like, it was like, man, man destroyed an entire universe except for himself <laughs> and got trapped in, like, yeah. a void. So, like, yeah. I yeah. mean, like, I think you need to change the rule just a little bit. I mean, just, like, enough so he doesn't break the multiverse. I mean, like, you gotta have some rules, man. Like, I cannot interfere, I cannot intervene. Nigga, who gives a fuck when this dude is trying to break the multiverse? Intervene, my guy, intervene. <laughs> He's like, I cannot, I cannot. undo my vow. <laughs> you're, you're like, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's... He that's, will kill everyone. That's hilarious to me. But, yeah, I don't know. It was, yeah, it was entertaining. It was fun. Um... I will um, look forward to the next season. Um, and, yeah. yeah. And now, now we have coming up, we have Hawkeye meet Bruce Willis um, Die Hard. That's what it feels like. <laughs> the trailer makes me look, it makes it feel like Hawkeye is Die Hard. That's what, it, that's what it feels like. It's Christmas. Looks like we're trapped in a mall. Which I have a very I hard time like of taking seriously, seeing as though Jeremy Renner is Hawkeye. So, like, I don't... I, <laughs> I don't take Jeremy Renner serious as a person, um, so like <laughs> him as a Hawkeye is funny, like just full stop. Like just him <laughs> as Hawkeye is funny. I feel like I yeah, feel like I Hawkeye is I... trying to be Jeremy Renner. That's what I feel like. <laughs> I don't see Jeremy Renner playing Hawkeye. I see Hawkeye trying to play Jeremy Renner. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh my gosh! But that's, that's what we have to look forward to next, guys. We have that to look forward to, mm -hmm. um, and we have some other movies that are coming up on the docket as well. Um, yeah, Marvel movies. Yeah. And, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what. Uh, more, see what's going down there. Into. More geek stuff. More geek stuff coming your way. Um, what else we got? I think that's it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm Lord Third, your number one trash player, aka the garbage <laughs> goat. <laughs> um, I am the king of dreams, um, the master of the ten rings, and we're pondering the question: What's next? <laughs> <laughs> and we are the Sly Guys, delivering the hottest of our takes on all things nerdy and culture. And we will see you soon.